All right, so it's summertime again, and that means it's time to start working on the house again. Uh, what we've got going this evening is, uh, well, actually, we already had these up. So these are 5 8 inch thick hemlock boards, and they are going to be destined to be clapboards for our house. So stick around and see how we're taking care of that. So first we're going to talk about these boards and why we're not using thin tapered clapboards. So these are just 5 eighths of an inch thick. Um, they're pretty, they're still pretty heavy because they're hemlock. Uh, and here's a good example. So, so they're 5 eighths of an inch thick. They're varying uh, widths and they are no, no thinner than 6 inches because they're going for a five inch reveal. Um, so yeah, why are these not tapered? Well, these are not tapered because uh, the mill that we're milling our lumber on does not have a jig to taper them or a cant cutter to what, when you're cutting the cant to tip it this way and that way so you can get that tapered look. Uh, what we're gonna do to get the tapered look, the clapboard look, is uh, we're gonna cheat a little bit. And we'll talk about how we're gonna do that. First, we just kinda wanna talk about the anatomy of these boards and uh, why we're going with this just straight cut. So how are we going to get the boards to look like clapboards? Well, we're going to start off with a one inch uh, thick, one inch as in the one inch deep from the, the house wrap, uh, one inch thick little starter strip. Um, we've got our trim board here. Uh, so with clapboards or shakes, we put all our trim boards up first. Got trim boards around the door and windows so that way we can measure correctly from there to there what needs to be our uh, clapboard length so we're gonna talk about what we're gonna do with the clapboards and then we'll put a couple up now since these boards are still green I want them to dry um, but I don't want them to cup so when boards this thin especially with hemlock uh, I've noticed that as they're drying they tend to cup and by cup I mean Instead of being flat like this, they, the ends kind of bend up. So uh, these, these, these ends will bend up, especially if it's close to, um, like maybe you can see the grain on this one. You see that really curvy grain? Well, especially if the middle of the tree was really close to the center of the board, the heart, the, I mean the, grow, the growth rings will kind of pull. So uh, we want to put them up as soon as possible to prevent that. Uh, but the problem is we don't want the moisture from them drying to stay in there. So what I'm thinking about doing, and maybe somebody can say, oh no, you were wrong and you shouldn't have done this. And by then I'll probably have all the clapboards on this side up. So I won't do it for that side. But <laughs> what I'm thinking of doing is what I've got here is boiled linseed oil. And it's sort of like a natural um, preservative. It, it'll protect and seal the wood. I just got it at the hardware store. And I'm painting the backs, what are going to be the backs of the clapboards. Uh, with the hope, the backs probably and maybe the, the overlap. So say this is a six inch board and we're going for a five inch reveal. I'll maybe just paint, not paint, oil this little strip right here. Uh, but with the hopes that all the moisture that's in there will escape from the reveal. And then this fall, after the wood has dried sufficiently, oil the reveal and then hopefully just do that once every four or five years or whatever to keep the wood from rotting because hemlock is not cedar which would last sawn cedar would last easily 40 50 years um, pine will last maybe 15 some people may well, say 25 but whatever uh, we don't want to have to rip all our siding down and replace it so we really like the look of wood we're definitely not going to go with ticky tacky vinyl um, that may be somebody's cup of tea but it's not ours and uh, we're gonna cut some and get started on this wall right here. So I'm putting some turpentine in the boiled linseed oil. Um, it's a little less than one to one um, with favoring the, the boiled linseed oil side. And what that does is it's gonna help the linseed oil dry quicker. Um, and it kinda also helps me conserve linseed oil because it's expensive. Um, not super expensive, but 
anyway, um, I'm going to mix that up. It's okay if I get some on my board because that's what I'm treating. And it sort of thins out the oil too, so it spreads a lot easier. So I'm going to keep doing that on the backs of the board and the overhang. And uh, when I've got these ones treated, I will move on to the next ones. I'll probably just treat all the sawn ones that we have here. And then we'll put a couple up. So I tore the first four clapboards off so I could oil the backs and the overhangs. And now we're going to put them back up. Another thing you may notice is we have a metal roofing skirt. I uh, got a bunch of metal roofing last year for free uh, from some camp down the road. And we're going to continue putting a skirt on all around the house so it stays cool under there. And so no critters get under there. And um, also just to close off the, the basically the small part of the, the small crawl space. We're going to leave like a trap door around this corner. Uh, because that's where the biggest gap is. Uh, but that's besides the point. You'll see us do more of that later. Right now we're going to put up clapboards. So here is uh, the finished product. I wouldn't say finished, but these, these are all the clapboards that we had milled. So uh, this is where we had to stop. Um, we still got to uh, obviously put some up here, but before we can do this, I've got to finish the trim boards on the door. And in order to do that, I need to make a door casing. So uh, right now our door is just like sort of, you can see these gaps right through the door. Uh, they're kind of, it's just kind of ghettoed up, uh, jerry-rigged up. It opens and closes, uh, see. but uh, it's not um, properly installed. So I've got to build a door casing, um, which I think I have material to do, along with a threshold, a real threshold. Um, this door will be set back about two inches. Um, so yeah, in order to, to add more clapboards, uh, those are the, some of the steps that I have to do first. Um, it helps because we don't have any more clapboards, so um, it's not really a huge deal. I've got to do that anyway. This is a little piece of, um, this is kind of cool. So it goes in a little bit, and this is a fungus that grows in the hemlock. I think this is what causes ring shake in the hemlock trees. So ring shake is when the growth rings separate. That's what happened like this. This was kind of pointed out like that, and I broke it. Um, and... Yeah, that's, that's what happened with that. Um, yeah, I'm really loving the look of this. Uh, like I said before, we're going to let these dry um, for until the fall. And then we will oil the exposed sides. So it keeps the, uh, the clapboards looking 
um, this kind of blonde color instead of so this this is all hemlock and this is hemlock so it it grays as it dries which is nice too um, but I also just like the the fresher look uh, the trim boards along the windows doors and corners I think are gonna stain uh, like a darker brown um, maybe like a bark color we were thinking of trying to use some uh, black walnut hulls to, to, to stain them so we will wait until fall and see if we can make some black walnut hull stain that would be really cool um, the, the holes stain my hands black for two weeks when we're collecting them and gathering them and processing them um, so I think it'll work pretty well it might just be something that we have to apply once or twice a year uh, or once every two years rather um, but we'll see how it works out um, so that's it for this video uh, stick around and there'll be more building a homestead from scratch to come this summer uh, and thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe like and share thanks again take care guys